Another great day in the carpet and flooring industry, but before we get into those carpet installation strategies and talk about how you could stay busy through all this mayhem, let's make some investments. And hire some bush, buy me a little share of Budweiser because it's at like half price right now. Don't do what I do, but if you want to start trading stocks, consider Robinhood free stock with the link below. Now let's go ahead and tackle these four bedrooms we had today with a hall and stairs. Now this was interesting. The client had closed on the house with the quickness by the time I had got there to get the estimate. So I could not beat their installation date of them showing up with furniture. So they kept it light, you know, just moved in a little bit of furniture. We all worked together because, hey, things got to happen. We want to stay productive and we want to stay paid. So, yeah. We'll help shuffle around a little bit of furniture at cost just to keep everything moving forward. So we got the tack strip going down. Now we're going to go ahead and slop and pop some padding. Get it all cut to fit to the tack strip. Just basically tracing around the room. See how nice little hairline gap we got around that tack strip there? Good, good, good. Then you're going to staple it down so it's secured to the floor. Once we have it secured, we're going to go around pick up all those pad scraps, all the little popcorn balls, all that fun stuff. Then we're going to go ahead and start bringing in the carpet, laying it out, and letting it warm up. Still a little chilly here in Cleveland. We're going to go ahead and take the scraps and throw them on the stairs. Utilize all that scrap pad so that we have nice balance pieces that we could roll into the next job. Got the carpet in the house. Yeah, we kind of fold it up, spin it around. That way we're not totally murdering the walls and scuffing up the paint every which way. They got the wall units for the heat there, so that's always nice because you can just huck and go on that side. Then you just focus on the walls with the tack strip to do your little fine-tuned trimming and tucking, making everything look beautiful. All right, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm cutting the seam for the closet, getting things ready. And a rough cut around the door jam there, then we're going to go ahead and cut a little shot to do that fill. Once that's lobbed off, we'll get that seam tape, seam iron going, and that fill piece on top of it, just like that. See how we did that there? Scooch it over. Good, good, good. Let that seam iron heat up, cranking it on four. Don't you dare cook your seams on four if you're a DIY person or new to this game. Only the pros. If you're new to it, cook it at about two and a half, three, so you have a little more time to work with it. Let that seam iron sit on its spot for about 10 seconds and slide it an iron's length forward. Then we're going to go ahead and cut some stairs out of the scrap, utilizing every last little bit of the material for this job site there. Let's cut a couple stairs. Carpet's nice and warm. I'm going to start blasting this on, locking it on. Had my homie Santa in today. He was uh, had a bum day, so he came in and hung out with us. We call that fam style around here. So for you installers out there, if any of your homies need some work and you have extra work, but you don't want to give up a whole job, say, yeah, you could roll fam style and you just break them off a percentage of the job. That's how you look out for your crew that you came up with. Make sure they're still eating through these tough times if they're in a rough patch. Look out for your teams. Don't be so selfish all the time. Then when you're trimming and tucking, you want to go ahead and cut it maybe a quarter inch hefty, maybe not, and just tuck it down beautifully to that quarter round. There was that wall heater unit. Those are always great because you just lock them on, push it under, walk away. Beautiful finish. No big deal. But yeah, these walls, I think we had quarter round on these as well. So it takes a little more time to get that trim just right. The key, take your time trimming it. Go slow, cut a section, tuck it. If it looks phenomenal, continue that process. If it looks like hot garbage, you know you did it wrong and you need to tweak your approach. Crazy, but that's all there is to it. Now we got another closet seam we're slopping and popping together here. Every one of these rooms had a fill in the closet. Four bedrooms, fill in every closet. Decent material to work with, though. Everything seemed up oh so nice, so that is a massive perk there. Now we're in the hallway, kind of setting up shop, get the length stretched on. Trim and tuck, everything's good. Now we're going to do these doorway seams. Do the one half, seam, 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 chop, 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 cutty, cut, 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 put the, team, <laughs> put the seam tape under there, take the iron, slide it across, eight to ten seconds in each spot, blend those fibers together, and life is good. On to the next one as people just stomp all over the seam. By the way, that is a great way to make your seams look good. Just let your homies walk across them while you're burning them. It will give it a great effect. Make sure your customer loves you and you can talk your way out of any situation because it'll actually look like hot garbage and you still want to get paid. So we go ahead and unroll that seam tape there. We're going to go ahead and burn that seam together. And then we only have two more seams to go. And then this had a bonus to it. I didn't get to film it, but they had shelving units in their living room. They tore them out. When I did the initial estimate, they didn't notice anything because the shelving units were in there. When they busted them out, they had old carpet under them, and then the new carpet was tucked up to the shelf. So I had to patch it in with this carpet, which was pretty comparable, but it was it would have made a great video. Unfortunately, just the situation wasn't set up properly for me to catch it. But little patch jobs like that, we did it for free, took an extra hour because it was wonky as could be. But 
because of things like that, your customer will love you and give you more referrals. Now, if you're called on a situation like that, you can get an easy $125 just patching in some random stuff, cleaning it up, and you're good to go. So keep that in mind when you're complaining about not having any money. Better take on some carpet repairs. Do the jobs you usually wouldn't do and get the bread you deserve so you can invest it and make your money grow for you. Thank you so much for connecting. 